All right. Um, I thought Inception was confusing. I was wrong. Paprika is very confusing. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be doing a bit of a vlog for you. It's not going to be like a, a full on fun vlog. It's just basically going to be me documenting my before and after of watching Paprika for the first time. It's currently playing in the theaters just for like two days, I guess. Uh, it's going to be for the Satoshi Kone Festival that they have going on February 7th and 8th. So it is the 7th currently. So by the time you see this, it's probably not playing in your theater. I'm sorry. But anyway, I did this earlier a few months ago with Perfect Blue, but I didn't do like a full review for you guys here on the channel. I did on TikTok. So if you guys want to follow us on TikTok, you can do that in the description down below. Uh, so yeah, that was my first time seeing that. And I was very happy with that and how that turned out. So I'm going to be going to see Paprika for the first time. So I decided, hey, let's document it for you all. And um, yeah, so all I know about the film is that it's like Inception, before Inception. It's where Nolan got like his inspiration to make the movie from, really. Just like the, the hallway scene, I guess, is like the big one. So I'm expecting some sort of like mind bending thriller type film. So we'll see how that goes. That's kind of what Perfect Blue was, but maybe this one's a little bit more sci-fi. -y? I don't know. I'm expecting something great because it's widely regarded as a great. So let's see how that goes. All right, I'm here a little bit early because I don't have a life. I have nothing else to do. So yeah, but also in general, I just show up to movies early because snacks and stuff, but snacks that's the whole reason I, I i wanted to record before i go in there what is your go-to snacks when you go to the movies because for me i think the classic is soda popcorn and red vines so if you eat twizzlers or if you prefer twizzlers over red vines you're insane and i want you to unsubscribe right now because who why would you prefer twizzlers over red vines twizzlers taste like plastic just like strained plastic and red vines are just delicious so i don't know it's crazy to me so that's what i wanted to, to get off my chest before i go in here um, also I'm alone. That's the other thing too. If you haven't unlocked the ability to go to the movies alone yet, you're missing out. It's honestly the best. You don't have to wait for anybody. You don't have to worry about, hey, if they're gonna be on time. You don't have to worry about like waiting in line, ordering double the stuff, double wait time, all that stuff. You get in, you get your snacks, you get out. No fuss, no mess. Not to worry about like if they're watching the movie or not, or if you, you know, if they're interested as much as you are. You just have to worry about yourself, which I think is cool. Only thing that sucks is like, there's certain movies you can't do it with. Like, if it's a movie that's, like, you know, a blockbuster, I feel like you have to go with people because that's, like, more enjoyable when you're with people. But if it's, like, stuff like this where, like, you know, half my friends are into it or if people are busy, whatever, I don't mind. It's cool. It's, like, it's my own little treat. It's for me, and it's my own um, taking myself out type situation. So, basically, I'll, I say all this to say, uh, get red vines when you go to the movies. And when you go to the movies, go by yourself because it's, it's better. Oh, also, there's, like, no one here right now. Usually, this shit's, like, super packed. But it's a Wednesday. It's kind of late. No one's really here, so that just adds to the loneliness of this experience, which is great. All right. Also, drink car. Fire. Fire. This is me hiding because I was originally sitting in a row that nobody sat in, but then right before the movie started, someone sat next to me, so that's annoying. So I went to go hide in the bathroom. All right. Um, I thought Inception was confusing. I was wrong. Paprika is very confusing. So for those who haven't seen Paprika, basically it's a story about a machine that allows therapists to enter their patients' minds through their dreams and give them treatment. And the main character, Paprika, is the character that we follow the most throughout the story. She's the most um, predominant therapist in this facility. And this device that allows you to enter the dreams is called the DC Mini, I believe it is. They said it a lot in the movie and I just completely forgot the name of it but something something like that it gets stolen from a patient or somebody inside who's working there and they're pretty much trying to figure out who took this device and that is as much sense as you'll get from the story from there on the rest of the story just it doesn't make any sense it's just you're along for the ride and you hopefully catch on at one point and hang on for as long as you can and it's crazy to see the jump from quality of Perfect Blue to Paprika. I've never seen Tokyo Godfather, so I didn't really see the progression that much. So basically going from Satoshi Kon's first movie to his last film, that was such a jarring experience because like the animation and everything in between that involves around the animation and the drawing aspect of it was just like turned up to 10. This is a visual spectacle for anybody watching this and you're into the medium at all of anime. You're going to enjoy seeing what you see because a lot of these these images and and twisted things that pop up you're like oh man this is crazy if this was on mute and it was playing in the background of some like say you're at like 
the barber shop, I guess, or uh, like a bar or something, and it's playing in the background while you're chilling, vibing, whatever, it's gonna be cool to watch and just be like, oh, that's sick, what's that? But when you turn it on and the dialogue starts playing, then you're gonna be like, what What am I watching? Did I? Did somebody slip something in my drink? Because like, I don't understand what's happening. Should I be knowing what's happening? No, you shouldn't. You just need to just sit there and then just watch it because yeah, a lot of it doesn't, I mean, I'm sure it does get explained if you pay attention a lot, but the first watch through, this is my first watch through, this is my instant initial thoughts of the film. I didn't really get a lot of it. The main thing that I got is that Paprika, the main lady, um, Atsuka, Atsuko, Atchan is what he calls her, the, the main guy, uh, she's a magical girl. That's pretty much what I've gathered from this. She's the best magical girl I've ever seen. She transforms into Paprika as she enters the dreams. She's the main therapist, and uh, throughout the film, you're like, Paprika, who is she? And then the lady keeps talking about Paprika, and everybody in her office is like, oh, you need to, you know, get Paprika on this case. And I'm like, is she a different person? Or is she like, is this her? And then you find out, like, kind of halfway through that she is Paprika. That's her alter ego that she enters the minds of these people with, which is cool. And then it's also a love story beneath all of it, because towards the end, um, I don't want to spoil it too much, uh, the person's that end up in love kind of surprised and i'm like you know what that's kind of that's very sweet the way they did that that was a nice little wrap up there but as far as like what's happening on screen and what's going on it's a lot i can't even tell what's what what is it real is it part of a dream that is the confusion that you get and i mean i guess that's probably his vision he didn't want you to fully understand what was happening and even like a lot of the dialogue that they're saying like the the main bad guy his followers they were just saying like a bunch of riddles like oh there's no light without dark there's no man without woman the lightness will come to dark and you just you don't have to pay attention really because it's just nonsense it's just typical bad guy follower stuff they're just spewing nonsense so it doesn't add to the story i mean well it doesn't improve upon the confusion that you'll have watching this and then the main cop that we have tonakawa remember his name <laughs> Uh, you get to see what he's dealing with and why he's in therapy in the first place. The the guilt that he's feeling from his past case that he was involved with. So it's cool to see his story come to fruition and him like forgiving himself like towards the end of it all. Again, I don't want to spoil too much of what like happens in his side of the story. But yeah, you have like four different storylines going on throughout and they all pretty much get resolved. There's only like one or two characters that you're kind of like, oh, that didn't get resolved or that was kind of weird. But for the most part, everybody's stories did get somewhat solved. You gotta see them come to a conclusion, even though the ride getting there was a bit weird and confusing. But I feel like that's most of Satoshi Kon's work, at least from what I've seen, uh, you know, Paranoia Agent and Perfect Blue. It is a little out there and crazy sometimes, but that's just like how his mind works. And it's a really beautiful, crazy mind. And it's a shame that we lost him um, because I'm sure he would have kept making crazier and crazier things that like bent people's minds and ideas of what the medium of anime could be like in the film industry um, we would have gotten more films that probably influenced further films just like i mentioned earlier that this pretty much had a big hand in inception and the story that they had there as far as like the main premise of it so it would have been interesting to see what he comes up with or came up with next so that was what i enjoyed most about the film was that uh, the stories that he was telling was confusing you but it kept you interested enough to where you're like you know what i can't turn away it's just something that's keeping me drawn in and it's just something so cool to see somebody's mind that is that twisted and that weird and you're just like enjoying it for the ride sometimes you just gotta be like you know what this guy's weird but it's like going to uh the chocolate factory in willy wonka and you're like this kid's weird not this kid this man willy wonka is weird but i'm gonna follow him and see where he takes me because this is a fun journey as we're going through it so i guess yeah sadoji kona is kind of like the willy wonka of the anime industry i would say he's a he's a weirdo but he's a genius as well and i'm sure once i like further research this and like you know watch videos kind of explaining everything i'll probably enjoy it more with perfect blue i came out of that like mind blown and i i got it right then and there like what happened and like the the journey that we took that was a little more straightforward this one's a little weirder you gotta sift through a lot of it to understand fully what's happening and uh yeah so maybe that will improve upon like the score that i give it and the score that i will be giving it out of 10 off this first experience i'm gonna go seven and a half i know that's controversial because i know this is a lot of people's favorite film by satoshi Kon, but it's just the fact that i'm just a little confused right now and that's like that's a me issue you know i don't really dissect things on the first watch through i have to see the story kind of unfold first because during the first watch through of anything i'm trying to figure out hey what's gonna happen here or trying to predict things 
but as soon as i see the conclusion happen i can go back and watch it again and be like okay i already know what's gonna happen so i don't have to get distracted by all these bells and whistles i'm gonna focus on what i need to dissect so uh yeah upon first watch through of paprika i'm gonna give it a seven and a half out of ten would i recommend yeah sure if you're into uh twisted fantastical stories with great animation and also the soundtrack for this the score look at that film knowledge coming into play the score for this film uh was actually really good i think it carried the film a lot of the time for me uh the the song choices they had during the certain settings and certain things that were happening really helped me stay engaged so i think the score was like probably like the best thing for me from this besides the visuals the visuals were great but like the score itself was like oh damn that was surprising it was nice so uh yeah seven and a half do i recommend yes if you're into this type shit um which i'm sure if you're watching this you are into it check it out if you haven't uh would i recommend it being your first viewing of like a satoshi Kon project probably not i would say if you're like a bigger like anime type fan like just like typical like you know shonen and stuff like that i would say watch paranoia agent first and then kind of work your way through his filmography i feel like that'd be the better approach i haven't seen tokyo godfathers but i feel like that might be his most grounded film from what i've seen in the previews so maybe i'll watch that if they do play it because i think they did play it over christmas but i missed it if they, if they bring it back i'll watch it if not i can just review it regular or rent it or whatever but yeah paprika first time watch good experience so if you guys enjoyed this video if you guys enjoyed this little mini vlog that i did let me know down below in the comment section also you can subscribe that'd be cool or follow us and all the links that are down below and uh i think that's all the shout outs i need to do so until next time go dream a little dream of me <laughs>